Okay. Okay. So you get yourself embedded into the IDF. Big time. Hershey's for Heroes. Tell us what this is. So uh, I came up with the idea uh, because I saw that a lot of Jewish organizations raised money for the soldiers to get them pizzas and hamburgers and uh, equipment and things like that. And I thought, i got to make it personal. I need to be able to give that person that donates something back in return. So I just like a note on a chocolate bar. Okay. So I, in, in seven years, I quit the program when Corona hit because I was accused of passing Corona. But for seven years, we handed out over 50,000 chocolate bars. Uh, first of all, people started mailing them. Then I had customs on me because, why well, are you poisoning our soldiers? And then I had to pay a customs fee and they were melting on the way. <laughs> so we started buying them wholesale. Uh, and I would get invited to bases on my birthday, on my like 45th birthday, I was invited to a base, uh, to come and speak to the soldiers. We handed out over, over three, 400 chocolate bars. I've had like 3000 chocolate bars in my, in my apartment at one time. <laughs> okay. So you, at this point, you're in Israel, you love Israel. You love the IDF. You're giving these soldiers chocolates. You're saying they're Hershey's for heroes. You're just... You're, and that got changed, by the way. I don't. I don't mean to interrupt you. They got changed because someone didn't. A Jewish guy, liberal, didn't like what I was saying about some things about the homosexual parade, and so he actually turned me into Hershey's for using their name. Uh, I had an attorney. Con so then I just changed it, which is much better. I changed the chocolates for heroes, which in Hebrew sounds much better. Chocolade la Gibberim. Okay, versus. What was it in Hebrew before? Hershey's. I, I don't even know. Hershey's for Liggy <laughs> There's no Her <laughs> okay. Hershey's isn't in Hebrew. There's no Hershey's in Hebrew. Okay. Okay. So you do this program. You're getting, what were you, so this gave you access to the bases, gave you access to the IDF. What were you looking front lines for? Of war. Front lines of war. I've been on the front lines of war in 2014 with the Israeli soldiers in Operation Protective Edge. I was in the, the I recorded. I was in the biggest firefight pre Gaza invasion on Kibbutz Sufa. I'd never, it was crazy. It was in, in, in insane, insane. But I, I have served a lot with those. I was the most embedded uh, without having direct military permission from the top. But the soldiers knew me, the commanders knew me, and that's how I got on the bases because I'd built this personal relationship. With the, with the commanders of the bases and with soldiers all around. Chocolate goes a long way, I guess. Right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. What did you see when you were, um, because you didn't change your mind about Israel and what's going on with them until recently, like 2020, since COVID, right? So at this point, yeah. so while you were on the front lines with them in 2014, and I mean, what it, did you see anything that was questionable? Did you see, I mean, what did you see? Look, I, over time, I, I've, I've, you know, I ask questions about the Gaza. Uh, I, I, there's so much I did there, especially down on the Gaza border. I've been to Hebron many, many times. Uh, up in the north, when they were getting rockets from Hezbollah in like 2015, uh, there was actually a fighter plane that crashed, uh, an Israeli fighter plane that was shot down over Syria. Yeah. So I've done a lot, and I did have a lot of questions, and even Israelis were telling me over time, Michael, listen, we thank you for your support. We love you. But there are things happening in this country that you need to understand that are very evil. But I didn't have a reason to confront those questions. There was nothing pushing me until 2020. Did they elaborate on what that evil was? No, they did not. They would just say there's not. some there's things going on here that aren't as they say. Because I didn't want to hear it. I didn't want to hear it. You were you loved and Israel. I'll, you loved the IDF. You loved what they well, were doing. You didn't want to hear it. Let, I'll, let me I'll, let me narrow that down because I didn't want to hear it because I thought you know what, two thousand years of persecution, which is not actually true. I understand that now. Okay. I've been told a narrative that I never investigated. It's like crazy that I never investigated. But I was always told the victim, the Holocaust, the Nazis, all this stuff. I said, okay, they got their homeland back. Never yeah. investigated how that happened. I was just told it was a miracle from God, accepted it, and never asked questions. And I didn't want to hear it, and I'll tell you why. Because 
They've been through enough. Give them a little something. The media lies. You know what? I want to be that one guy that just doesn't want to go there. I see all the good things. And there are a lot of good things about Israel. Mm -hmm. A lot. Yeah. But I didn't want to get into the negative side. I never got involved in the politics. I said, you know what? The Jews have their homeland back. Never asked why. Have their homeland back. It's their, it's their responsibility to handle whatever political problems they have. And what were they saying about the Palestinians? I, look, I, I was, I, when I would go to Hebron, places like Hebron, you know, I saw a lot of things. Uh, the, it is segregated there. I mean, it is. I was told always constantly, security, security, security. So I went into the Muslim part of Hebron. I've been to Kalkiria, a place called Kalkiria, which has more terrorists from what I've been told by the commanders that were friends of mine and cautioned not to go there than in Gaza. Okay. And I still went there. I went there for a specific mission. Uh, but uh, I saw the segregation. And then I went into the Muslim part and they're surrounded by a wall. Okay. And this is, this is very serious because when you're in uh, north of Tel Aviv, when you go north of Tel Aviv, you're driving along the highway. You actually see that wall. You can't comprehend how close you are to the Muslim part, to the Arab part, because not all Arabs are Muslims. Right. You can't comprehend how close you are, the activity on the other side of that wall. Until you actually live there, you have to live there to be able to grasp and experience all this. So I saw that and I'm like, but why is that? Why are they walking? You can't walk down here. And soldiers even tell me, no, no, they have to stay up there. And again, I had the love and I listened. These people loved me. They took me in. Okay. They treated me wonderfully, but there's still that underlying current that I, that I saw that I didn't question until all things started 2020 for me. I had to be educated over time and see with my eyes. I'm not completely brainwashed. A lot of people are, man. In 2024, most people are brainwashed. Yeah, we learned that, didn't we? <laughs> Sadly, it was very eye-opening and very uh, in a shocking, terrible way. So you you saw you saw that these people were segregated, that they were being treated differently, but you just figured, well, they're telling me it's for security reasons, and so it is what it is. And the laws are different too. Listen, the, the uh, here's the narrative: the Arabs that live in Israel are happy and free. Okay, that's not necessarily true. Number one, the Arabs that live in Judea and Samaria, and right now they're doing a cleansing. I want you to watch what's happening in East Jerusalem because they're saying in the mainstream media that these Arabs are Hamas right. and ISIS. ISIS, by the way, was started by the CIA and Mossad. Okay, They never once attacked Israel, and Israel was giving aid to ISIS. You can find that anywhere in the mainstream media. Okay, yeah. But they never once attacked Israel. But they're more than willing to kill Arabs and Muslims and Christians. Anyway, so I, 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 I saw, I lost my train of thought. I saw things that were happening. What was the question? Well, we were, uh, <laughs> um, it, it was about, um, well, I lost it too, I guess. <laughs> we're in the same It's boat. okay. Now, yeah, so just, just basically. Uh, oh, by the way, okay. Yeah. The narrative, the narrative is, is that Arabs live very happily in Israel. Let me tell you, right. okay, you see go. right now, you're seeing hundreds of thousands of Israeli Jews. Let me emphasize that Jews, because it is the Jewish state, even when it's something negative. Okay. So you won't ever see ever, not once, not for one second, any Arabs that have a problem with the government ever protesting like that. You'll never see that. Do you know why? Because all those Jews will call the cops and they will send in the military and beat them down. Arabs don't have freedom of speech. They have freedom of speech that the government, Jews don't even have freedom of speech there. During Corona, I sent you the video with Naftali Bennett. Did you see it? Yeah. Where he said, we created the green passport technology. China uses it. Your government uses it. Israel came right out of Israel. And Nathalie Bennett, who was defense minister on Netanyahu, brags about it. So all the Jews have their phones monitored. All the Arabs have their phones monitored. Don't think for a second the Arabs will ever have the freedoms, the full freedoms that Jews do. It's a lie. And let me tell you, I'll add on top of that, 
A Jew cannot marry a non-Jew in the state of Israel. Right. They have to go outside the country. You talk about discrimination. Man, y'all are racist, okay? Do not give me this, all right? You have to go outside of the country to marry. Then you got to come back and fight for your ability to stay there, okay? And so, if an is, so if an Israeli Jew marries an Israeli Muslim Arab or Christian Arab never inside gonna happen. Of the, they can't do never it. Gonna Even happen. though they're next they're nope. neighbors. They're right there. They're working they're in love. They're not allowed to marry even and though they're you will both be Israeli. persecuted. You will wow. be persecuted. Severely. Your family will disown you. Listen, my 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 the the girl that I used to date in Israel, her ex husband is not seen as a Jew and he's black and she's Yemen. She's one shade away from being black. Yeah. Okay. And she's her Jewish. family, she's Jewish. So she, okay. He sees himself. He's a black Hebrew. Okay. okay. He, so they consider him not Jewish. And on top of that, he's black. Okay. Yeah. So her family gave her the hardest time. I, I hope she doesn't see this and get mad, but I'm not naming her name, but her family gave her the hardest time because he wasn't Jewish and he was black. I'm like, they were mad because he's black. You're one shade away. Because yeah. she's dark skinned. I mean, it's yeah. like crazy. So yeah. they don't, the Arabs don't really have the freedoms that the Israeli government media and all the all the Jews in Israel brag about. So they technically do, but they know that if they were to speak up and go protest. Know your place. Yeah, know your place. Okay. Like they okay. used to say to the blacks in the South, know yeah. your place. Yeah. <laughs> So they, they, right. And, and, and we'd heard reports of this, that there's been a, uh, any, any Israel, an, an Israeli citizen who is Arab, you know, of Palestinian descent, if they speak up and say anything after October 7th on social media, the, the IDF yep. would show up at their door. Like they would have Absolutely. a problem with the cops just for posting something, posting free Palestine or anything at all on social media, they would end up, they would end up rounded up. Yeah. I mean, there's a professor right now, uh, a, a Jewish professor that's in jail right now. He's got, I think he's under house arrest. I haven't followed up on it. But even my Jewish friends, listen, my unvaccinated, let me emphasize that. My unvaccinated Jewish friends in Israel cannot come on my show now because they are afraid to speak out against the government. Hey, guys, thank you for watching this clip from the full Kim Iverson show, which you could catch just by heading to that link down below, KimIversonShow.com, you can watch the full show from what you just watched, or you can catch the full show live Monday through Friday, live streams, 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern at KimIversonShow.com. See you then. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Never miss an episode. Never miss a clip. Never miss a segment. Thanks, guys.